Tonight on The Edge, the prosecution builds its case against the parents of the Oxford High School shooter. And tonight we're learning new details about James and Jennifer Crumbly that prosecutors believe will lead to a conviction. Fox 2's Veronica Meadows joins us live now with more on what this new information is. Veronica. Yeah, good evening to the both of you. This is the new court filing at the Michigan Supreme Court. It is more than 30 pages long inside Oakland County. Prosecutors say that the evidence in this uh, in this document proves that the Crumbly parents were grossly negligent. Prosecutors saying that the Crumbly parents gave their mentally disturbed child access to a gun and then didn't stop him from intentionally hurting other people when he could have. A year and a half after the deadly Oxford High School shooting for so many, the fact that the tragedy happened is still hard to grasp, including for defense attorney Lillian Diallo. And I saw it from every angle and, and the one that I have to see it more clearly is the eyes of the deceased, the children. Now a filing at the Michigan Supreme Court outlines new evidence. Oakland County prosecutors say that evidence shows Ethan Crumbly's parents were negligent before their son killed four students. I think it's going to be causation, right, foreseeability and each person's actions. How did each person get here? In March 2021, prosecutors say Jennifer Crumbly Facebook messaged James Crumbly that she was freaking out when she couldn't reach her son. Prosecutors say those messages show the parents knew about their son's mental distress. Then prosecutors point to Jennifer Crumbly saying she feared her son would turn the gun on himself. Prosecutors say that fear shows the foreseeability of their son using the murder weapon. Prosecutors are arguing, yeah, there are so many times times that there were breaks that could have been put on so many different places it could have stopped when you went and got him a gun for Christmas or whatever he had some disturbing behavior when you get a call from the school that he's researching bullets last month the crumbly parents appealed to the Michigan Supreme Court to have four counts of involuntary manslaughter dismissed prosecutors say those charges are appropriate because the parents didn't keep the gun away from their troubled child the mother sends a text saying, Ethan, no, don't do that. No, Ethan, don't. Ethan, don't. Don't what? Did you know about the shooting? Had you talked to him? Don't do what? The Crumbly's defense argues regardless of what the parents did or didn't do, their actions didn't cause the deaths. They didn't shoot one person. I would put every witness up there and say, hey, did you see this person point a gun? Did you see this person, you know, fire the shot? Meanwhile, Diallo says legally this case could change a parent's accountability for their kids' actions. It means we have to just be responsible humans. That's it. It, that's so simple, but it's not. We are responsible for certain things. So what you can control and what you must control, that is what you should and you must. The parents are each charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Meanwhile, the shooter, Ethan Crumbly, pleaded guilty to killing his four classmates. Reporting live, Veronica Meadows will send it back to you. Veronica, any idea when the Supreme Court is going to make a decision in all of this? Yeah, Dave, we don't have word exactly when a decision will come down. Of course, the moment that we learn any new information, the moment that it comes down, we will keep you updated both on air and online. Thank you, Veronica, for that live report. We were wondering, are these people shooting firecrackers? What are they doing? It wasn't fireworks, they were gunshots. A mass shooting in Ypsilanti Township. Four people were shot outside an apartment building on George Place Monday evening. A 20-year-old and 16-year-old are dead. A 14-year-old and 19-year-old are hospitalized in serious condition. We're told the three youngest victims are brothers. Right now, police need leads. Anonymous tips can be made to Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. A disturbing case of ethnic intimidation in Livonia. 29-year-old Moez Irfan is accused of striking a 13-year-old boy in the head multiple times in the stairway at the Kirksey Rec Center, all while hurling racial slurs. The child had to be hospitalized for the injuries. Irfan was arrested, but first taken to a psychiatric facility. He's now charged with aggravated assault, ethnic intimidation, resisting and obstructing police, and acting as a habitual offender, for this is his third time.
He's fought for Detroiters for years, and now he's fighting for his life. Community activist Malik Shabazz is on life support tonight after suffering a massive heart attack. Malik! Malik Shabazz! Shabazz! Keep fighting! Keep fighting! Keep fighting! Keep fighting! Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Community members and city leaders gathered for a prayer vigil today outside Henry Ford Hospital. Shabazz has appeared countless times here on Fox 2 advocating for Detroiters and leading community efforts to help solve violent crimes. Now those he has tirelessly helped in Detroit are praying for his recovery. In the 25 years I've known Minister Malik Shabazz, I've never met a stronger man. Yeah. That's right. Malik would go out in 10 feet of snow. Malik would go out in the rain. Malik would go when his feet were hurting. He would go out no matter what. So true. Well, tonight our thoughts are with Malik Shabazz and his family. Most definitely. A former U of M quarterback loses his life in a drowning accident on a Florida panhandle beach. You may remember Ryan Mallett from the 2007 season. He transferred the following year after co coach Lloyd Carr left the program. During his time at Michigan, Mallett threw for nearly 900 yards and threw seven touchdowns. He finished his college career at Arkansas and was drafted in 2011 by the New England Patriots. Mallett got caught up in a rip current and was one of five drownings over the weekend. Ryan Mallett was 35 years old. It's hard to believe, but the start of the next school year is at risk. Yeah, that's the reality. If state lawmakers don't approve a new school aid budget, the state legislature will likely vote this week to spend a record $9,000 per student. But if six Republican senators don't join the Democrats with a yes vote, it could mean schools don't open in September. Lots of school districts are counting on that money to jumpstart um, their budgets. So if the IE is not granted, they will have to talk about um, adjourning sessions so that um, and so that us IE can become a reality. If funds are delayed, Governor Whitmer could end the legislative session, then call lawmakers back into a new session, freeing up the money sooner. We've been talking about it all day. The haze returned. Wildfire, wildfires in Canada continue to wreak havoc in our air here. An air quality alert has been extended until midnight of Thursday. You'll want to reduce or eliminate outdoor activities, especially if you're sensitive to the poor air. It's also recommended to close those windows right now. Instead, run that central AC. We do have one promising thing to tell you in our forecast, however. Mm, tomorrow is going to be a lot nicer than today. Here's Rich Litterman with more on what we can expect, Rich. Yeah, Taryn Day, we did see the clouds again today. Some areas of drizzle this morning, but this shows pretty well the smoke that's originating up in central Quebec, coming all the way down into the Great Lakes, making a turn to Chicago, Milwaukee, then down to Indianapolis and Cincy as well. But over time, we're going to see less smoke uh, into tomorrow night. Thursday, it's not going to be gone entirely, but there'll be less as we head into Thursday and Thursday night. Let me show you the air quality alert in effect until late tomorrow night. It's the Canadian smoke coming our way from Quebec. As of 10 o'clock, that number, air quality index 237, that's in the very unhealthy range. Again, things are going to get better. Uh, not so much tomorrow, but by Thursday. Look at all of the real estate covered by these air quality concerns. Indiana, Illinois, parts of uh, Wisconsin, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. How about live pictures from Milwaukee? You can see the haze and smoke there as well. 67 degrees. We made it to 72. A couple of peaks of sunshine late this afternoon, but again, it wasn't a great summer day. Notice the average is 83 and 63. We're going to see numbers closer to average starting tomorrow. Right now, most of us in the mid to lower 60s. The breeze is very light out there. Warmer numbers off to our west. Close to 80 right now in Minneapolis. 70 around Cincy. 55s for Cadillac and for Marquette. High pressure comes right over us tomorrow, so a quiet day Wednesday. Even Thursday is going to be quiet. I want to show you this cluster of dangerous storms. Six o'clock Thursday morning. These will be staying off to our west, but it's going to be Thursday night. We could see some additional storms. You'll see it all in the seven day forecast. Smoke and haze for tonight and again for tomorrow. Warmer on Wednesday back to 80 and then check out the seven day chances for storms, especially Friday into Saturday. We're going to check it all for you starting at 4 a.m. This is a way that neighbors can get involved, have solar farms in their neighborhoods, and it will eliminate blight and it will help the city reduce its carbon footprint. 
a new plan for solar energy in the Motor City aimed at helping clean up the D Detroit while being environmentally friendly. Mayor Mike Duggan will host a community meeting tomorrow where he will provide information on a concept called Solar Farms. The project was developed by DTE in partnership with the city of Detroit. The solar energy generated here goes to DTE's general grid. You can learn more about the project at Mayor Duggan's community meeting Wednesday at 7 p.m. at 2nd Ebenezer Church. From hockey to home, the old Joe Louis Arena site is transforming into a high-rise apartment building. The city hopes the landmark and water views will attract more people to live downtown. Fox 2's Brandon Hudson shows us what you can expect from the residences of Water Square. For nearly 40 years, the Detroit Red Wings were the most famous residents of 19 Steve Eiserman Drive or the Joe Louis Arena. Images of that final game in April 2017 live on in the hearts and minds of hockey fans all over Hockey Town. Now, several years later, after its demolition, the Red Wings' old digs are becoming a new luxury high rise. This is a place where people can live, it's a place where people can enjoy themselves, and they can do it in a way that's appropriate. Fox 2 joined Danny Sampson along his tour of the residences at Water Square. Sampson is the chief development officer of the Sterling Group, the company behind this state-of-the-art 25-story tower, which is right by the riverfront. A near 500-unit all-glass exterior apartment building with sleek European-style finishes where both the fitness center and the pool have breathtaking views of downtown Detroit even on a cloudy day. But those won't be the only places to see the skyline. The rooftop at the, at the residences of Water Square really has a few different components. We've got a chef's kitchen area for entertaining and dining, uh, outdoor rooftop area with two summer kitchens and fire pits, as well as a, a sky lounge that has a 9x9 TV wall. Inside, half the apartments are half studio, half one bedroom. Sampson says renting smaller is the new national trend. What he won't say yet is the price of rent, which is expected in the coming months. Samson tells us that price will be determined by the market value. We think there'll be a variety of folks interested in living at the residences of Water Square, um, really from empty nesters who are looking for, for downsizing opportunities, perhaps, to young professionals who want to work downtown. Other features include a hotel-style lobby, retail space, and seating along the riverfront. Move-in will happen in February 2024. Along the Detroit Riverfront, Brandon Hudson, Fox 2 News.